There you go. We're at Here. we're at Doug's vacation house. Doug's vacation house that is right. Guess what is right there? It's Mount Shasta. There's Mount Shasta. She's right in there. Now, do I talk? You better, because you're the main character. Can you hear me when I talk right now? Yep. Hello. My name, not to be laughing or smirking or anything, but my name is Douglas Cook. And uh, I left home when I was 15 years old, dropped out of school. I put myself in trade school for a year and worked part time. Been a plumber all my life. I lost everything five years ago. And I've been homeless for five years. And I want to tell you guys something out there. Never give up and learn how to survive, in which I've learned very well. I've gotten beat up two times on the streets in Redding, California. Cops don't care about us homeless people. And I've learned how to live in the woods and take care of myself, as you'll see in my camp. I deal with bears every summer and don't have a problem with it. And I'd like to say, as far as uh, being homeless, anybody who wants to talk to me, clean up your trash, take care of yourself, and never give up. Don't let people look down on you because they will. And and they will and that's what hurts when you lose everything but never give up your dignity don't give up your morals and i think that's number one too do not give up your morals and it's very very important a lot of people don't know what morals are don't sell your soul if your gut feeling says don't do it don't do it and be careful and this is my campsite. I've been working on this campsite for eight months now. In Redding, California, I got another campsite. And I've been doing this for five years. So we can show you're gonna show me your, your house now that you built. Yes, sir. And this is what I'm building. This is my tarp for my firewood, which I only use for burning trash. And this is what I'm building. This is my front door. And I'm using two by twos because I was in the trades all my life and I know how to do this. I'm using it with a limb saw cutting the wood. For those out there, this is for cutting limbs off of trees. Cutting 45s here. I pulled everything in here by hand which is about a mile away from right here. Here's my front door that I'm building. And I'm using, I'm using, excuse me, I'm using this queen that I was in the trade. It gives me more light. Plus I can see when the bears. <laughs> yeah, when the when bears, the bears, are, bears are, coming. are coming. And I'm telling you people out there, I live in bear country. And you get along with the bears, right? Yes, sir. They're not as bad as everybody tells you, no, are they? No, no, not at all. I yeah. got one bear, I call him Grandpa. And he's got, a, I, I think perhaps he might have passed away this year because he had a gurgling sound. And this last summer I fed him cantaloupes. He loves cantaloupes. But then he disappeared. But anyway, this is my door. I'm working on it today. I'm cleaning up the trim on it. I got three tarps on it because it snows about 12 feet up here. This is the inside. As you can see, I'm homeless, but that doesn't mean you can't make a home. This is the inside. You want me to turn on the lantern for more light? No, this this camera is so good. It's mm -hmm. it's. It's like a, a gift from a you know who. I got it on discount and it actually has got high definition. Mm -hmm. And man, it's just been a, a it's been a real blessing for me that I even have it. I hauled in this little table from somebody threw it in the garbage can and I reworked it. 
as you can see everybody I like to read and uh, anyways I made this I got the this wall in the front will be the same in the back except for of course the door and I'm gonna put a window right here frame that in and this is stout as you can see and just because you're homeless doesn't mean you can't make a home. Because you can't be clean and, and, and uh, you fruitful. Can, yeah, you can yep. be clean, clean shaven. And as you can see, I made a clothesline pole, just like in a regular house. The word homeless is you don't have a home. But what I've learned is you can make a home anywhere. Yeah. And, and the opportunity sometimes comes when you least expect it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> well, can you show me your garden? Yes, sir. And we are out here in the wilderness, folks. And, but anyways, let me show you all this first. This is why I do all my work as far as framing my walls and everything. I cleared this area out. And I want everybody to know I keep with the with conversate uh, keeping the woods the way they are. I made berms for my garden. Starting to look at my garden now. It's a watershed area. So when you have when you're living in a watershed area, where it's here, Redding, Tucson, Arizona, because I camped one year in Tucson, Arizona, uh, you gotta be respectful of that and not be trampling down everything. Well, looks like that doggy found a bone already. Oh yeah. Yeah, happy dogs. <laughs> well, if people want to see where the bears come in, well let me show you the garden again. Okay. Actually this is a better view. Well, this stick right here is where I got potatoes growing. I got four red potatoes, one yam, two russets, and two whites. And they'll be coming up. I use the ashes when I burn my trash right down there. It's an insulator, insulation for the snow and all that. And this spring, uh, about another three months, I'll be growing onions, pearl onions, uh, broccoli, cauliflower, and things like that. I'm gonna move the berms, as you can see there, go like this, move them and square it off. But I'm using the natural uh, wood that's fallen down over the trees over the years as a watershed area too, because you do not want to disturb any of that because the land is fragile. fragile. So you're trying to put yourself to work into what's natural and enhance it without changing it. Exactly, Yeah. exactly. You have to be very careful when you live in the woods. In the desert, like I said before, I lived in the desert out of Tucson, Arizona uh, for almost a year. And that's really fragile environment. And people have to be respectful of that. You clean up your trash, you can see I smoke cigarettes, and now because I'm a little better off, I can drink beer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I think I deserve it, folks, because seven, eight months I've been working on this camp. I got another camp in Redding, California. And I've been camping there for four winters there. This winter, I'm camping here. Well, that's a nice big old tree you got right there next to your camp. That's kind of cool, because that's, gosh, that's got to be, what, a at least a 150-year-old tree, you think? Yeah, but the only thing that worries me about if we do have a good electrical storm, I'm going to get zapped. <laughs> yeah, at least it's leaning away from your place. <laughs> yeah. No matter what, it's going that way. This is true. Yeah, I've got to take your blessings when you can get them up. Yeah, yeah. Well, hopefully if, it is, if we do have an electrical storm, it'll be in the middle of a winter blizzard, and at least I'll be warm for a few minutes. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> you'll, be riding a, you'll be riding a hot stick to heaven, huh? <laughs> uh, that's funny. All right, well, this is great. But anyway, let me show you where some of my bears come in. They're, I got one hanging around, it's a young one. It's only probably about two years old. 
three years old. So the bears stay with their parents for about two years and then the parents split. But one of my bears, well your dog is, comes right through here. Old Missy? That's old Missy. Comes right through here. But since I've been camped here, I've uh, I've had good rapport. And this is true. This, I'm not people out there that don't know anything about ending up homeless and they're gonna have to learn as you become homeless and the United States have probably a half a million homeless people now because of the economy yeah and when the economy finally decides that they no longer want to pleasure us with their crumbs then we're all gonna be out here learning how to transition back to being exactly what it was before all of the super smart uh, techno what I call as technocrats showed up we're actually gonna have to find out about being indigenous and the same thing like <laughs> I said earlier people on the streets that look at you as disgusting because you're homeless yeah they'll find out they'll they'll have to learn and they'll ask people like me what do I do and the same people that look down upon me being homeless and like every other homeless person looks just look down on yeah uh, you're gonna ask me now, and you're the same person when I was crossing the street, looks at me in disgust. Now you want my help? Can I be bitter? Yes, but no, I will help. And the thing too is that the same people that they look down on uh, when you're in town, when you go camping, they're the ones that you <laughs> they want to be around because as soon as they either, either even go into a state park or anything else, most of the human race they don't even know how to go to a state park without taking all their amenities with them. Exactly. They can't, they can't get off of the uh, apron strings, mm -hmm. you know, and the apron strings are on fire right now and they're mm -hmm. about to dissolve. So it's going to be a culture shock, but guess what? I'm pretty sure that everybody on this planet at one time agreed to come here and be indigenous because we were already came from a super technology race. Otherwise, we couldn't be indigenous. You can't start from indigenous and jump into the 21st century in less than 200 years. That's, that's not logical, it doesn't work out by the numbers. So what we have is a whole human race where a majority of them are, have always had more technology to where there is nothing unknown except for why in the hell they're all so selfish. <laughs> that's about it. And let me show you something else, folks. When you're homeless and everything, Everybody has to go potty, right? Yeah. Let me show you my latrine. All right, let's go to the to latrine. Because that's a necessity. Yeah, it's a necessity, people out there. And you don't have to be a filthy, filthy person. Being and leave homeless. toilet paper all around oh, and everything else. Let me else. show you my latrine. All right. Yeah, because that's, that's food, shelter, and bathroom. Yep. And you don't have to be dirty. You notice I keep clean shaven? Yeah. Yeah, when I when I walked across the country, I took uh, I took a stalk off of a, a cattail, and I made my own toothbrush. And then I got a sharp stone, and I used it to cut my beard until I found scissors along the highway. <laughs> this is my latrine, people. No toilet paper. You burn your stuff. There's not one turd there. Excuse my French, and I keep it clean. There you go. And so when you're homeless and you look at a homeless person and discuss, you better think that this is going to happen to you. Do you think everybody out there that I ever thought and imagined leaving home at 15 years old, working my life and had all the toys, which I found out that was not even important, didn't enhance my life at all. And I can tell you right now, and I think I might possibly be the happiest I've ever been in my life. And I, I've never taken, I have, and everybody does, they take for granted the things they have. But guess what? Every night I'm camped out here, every day, I hear the critters at night, the crows. I can mimic a lot of the animals and their sounds and everything. And, uh, but I think the point of this conversation too is uh, this can happen to anybody and you're going to need to find a homeless guy like me and there's a lot of guys like me that learn to adapt 
keep themselves clean and keep your morals up. Don't ever lose your morals. The pride goes down. You have to become humble to a point. And but don't lose your dignity and morals. You lose that, you lost everything. I know a lot of homeless people that gave up that way. And it's, it's, it's ebbing because it's little by little, it takes away from you. You have to be strong inside. You have to go by your gut feelings, your radar, your instincts. And if you didn't have them before because you had a cushion life, you better start getting in tune with yourself because that's all you have. If physician heal thyself, does that ring a bell? Yes, sir. Yeah, that didn't say physicians. No. said physician heal thyself. Mm -hmm. The truth shall be self-evident. Why? Because there's the only person that you know for sure who's telling the truth is who? Yourself. Yes. Everything else, trust. And when people get teed off, trust. Really, when the tee's off, the rest is rust. Mm -hmm. and, and, and as far as advice, well, everything that you do is, as far as advice, it could be vice in the end, but it also could be a vice that if you listen to some advice, you might be, have a sure hold on something. You know, the, everything's a double-edged sword. And if you can look at it as a double-edged sword and not own the sword, then maybe you can see both sides of the picture. Exactly. And so you've come to the point in your life where I've heard this from other people, even when I walked across the country, they told me the same thing. They said, look, when I had everything, I had nothing. Now that I have very little, I have more than I've ever had before. This is true. Because either you're, you're bound by all these man-made things, or you realize we come from a race that has no bounds. Because everything's either provided for you here for everybody, or it's not. And those that take, take, don't realize the only reason they can take is because everything's provided for you. Because if you actually owned anything, if you owned it, no one can take it from you. Ownerships means no one. So what, what do you have that no one can take from you? Your integrity, your freedom to choose good, bad, indifferent, or just plain say no. Keep you know. Your morals. Yep. Right is right. Wrong is wrong. It's a God-given fact. And like Henry was saying, you think you have everything, and this can happen to anybody, and it's happening all over across the United States. And let me tell you, you'll find your strength inside, and people don't realize how strong they are until your back is up against the wall. And when your back is up against the wall, you will not believe what you are capable of doing. I've cried like a baby when I first lost everything. Literally like a baby. I did not want, know what to do. My first campsite had a hangman's noose in it. And I'm a scared of heights. Yeah. And I crawled up this, climbed up this tree. If that was five years ago. You go back to my original camp in Cottonwood, California, out of Reading. The first thing you're going to see in my original camp, and I was there four or five months ago, and guess what? You'll see that hangman's noose. I sat there many days looking at it. And I go, no. And it's reminding me today, and I got my instincts and all that. And and like Henry was saying, how I feel too is, people think, uh, like I said, I had all the toys and all that. They weren't nothing to me. And I realized that years and years ago, got rid of all the toys. And the little things like this. You, you start appreciating things in a different way and in a different light. And what I've really learned too is I appreciate people more than I ever have. I appreciate the conversations that I have on the streets with other homeless people that have had bachelor degrees. If you look at the news and everything, which I don't look at anymore, look at all the college kids with the bachelor degrees and all that because the economy. They can only even have a job. That's what the whole Wall Street, uh, Occupy Wall Street throughout the world is, is based on the fact that the system is an illusion and it's basically a dictatorship. There is, there, you know, you don't have an honest person in a leadership position. Why? 
because we don't need leadership. What we need is teachers. And until we all know enough to actually all of us vote and say we want you as a leader because we want to do something positive, there is no such thing as leadership. All you have is people teaching you how weak they are because they have to have so many people under them or they have to make decisions for other people, blah, blah, blah. And it's, it's, it's an illusion. They are not leaders. There's no leaders on the earth. There are people teaching you how wimpy and weak they are by their secrets, oaths, and pledges, which only allow them to overcome themselves in a negative manner. You know, they, 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 they don't get it. The left hand doesn't know what the right hand's doing. Yeah. The and, right uh, hand doesn't know what the left hand doing. And they think they're well, not going to be accountable. Ball. I'm left-handed. Yeah, and I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm the right-handed guy. So, you know, <laughs> I, f I found it out from going to the top of the, the what you call the, the, the pecking order to the bottom of the pecking order, is that uh, no matter what, in the long run, everybody has to be accountable for every thought, word, and deed of everything that you are the foundation of. If you're supporting it, you're connected to it. So, so what's, the, so what's the, the crust of the thing? Be careful that you know the end thereof of the things that you're hooked to. And the things that you don't know the end thereof and you still have to do it, at least tell the people you're doing it, you know, or tell yourself that you're doing it. But if you had other choices, or if somebody asks you what you think, you tell them the truth. Yeah, I'm, I'm working for the, the government, but if I had a choice, I wouldn't be. But I don't have a choice. Well, why not? Well, because guess what? We're all in the same boat. There's only one boat. All the gods, all the demons, all the extraterrestrials, all the humans. In fact, everything in existence is in one boat. I gotta blow my nose. And by the way, people, this is not pot. I roll my own cigarettes. Bummer city. Because I'm, because I'm a poor, homeless <laughs> soul. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but anyways, I got.